Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to join us today. We're coming to you live from our studios in Kokum, namely we're on DTT because we're free to on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 125. We are your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. Coming up this afternoon, Defence Ministry dismisses report suggested it has withdrawn military officers fearing for stranded flood victims in Mepe. We'll hear from the minister who says they have rather deployed more men and resources Resources to the other flooded communities in dire need of their support. Also in this bulletin, ahead of the NPP presidential primaries on November 4, Joy News will be talking to delegates across the country to find out what influences their choice of a candidate to vote for in our latest series dubbed Fear Delegates. And Hosman Shoes donates school sandals to pupils of Siru Primary Schools in, in the following Joy News' Ghana Schools of Shame documentary. We have details plus business and more coming up shortly. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. We're also live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X via Joy News on TV. My personal handle is at the Nana Aisha. Please do stay for details. Government has begun processes to create an access road to the largest safe haven in Nortong to help to do away with traveling on the contaminated water, which has flooded several communities in the three Tong districts of the Volta region. According to the National Disaster Management Organization, a contractor has already been secured to undertake the activity. It says this is being done to avoid a possible health care emergency in the area as has been predicted by the Ghana Health Service due to the level of contamination of the water. Deputy Director General of NATMO Seji Saji made the disclosure on news file. Ghana Health Service has put out a notice and declared those waters and that particular place as a public health emergency. And what we want to do is getting an access route into the safe haven. And luckily, we have found an access road. Contractor came on the site to look at the feasibility study because it's going to two people's farms, and a few houses will have to be pulled down or so. Mm. So the contractor is coming in with the machines today. We start working. To, it is around four to five kilometers because it stretches from Masor to Mefe. If that is done, we will be able to cordon off or block completely transportation on that com uh, contaminated water. We are hoping that the work on that access route might be completed today or tomorrow right. so that we can have access. Thank you to the community now where the construction is ongoing for updates. Assemblyman for the area, Amos Ahosubolo, joins us with more. Grateful for your time, sir. How much relief will this construction bring to the affected communities? You are right to bring much, much relief to for us uh, since uh, we started applying this, uh, crossing the, the, the stream that has been covered by uh, the, the water and uh, it's contaminated too. So if there is an asset route to that place, it's fine. So as Nadmon said, as stated, yesterday they started it and they were able to create the access from battle to that of Mephir, the safe heaven. But uh, it's only left if uh, that road to be, I mean, to be graveled, to be put, put in a, a normal shape. Yesterday, myself, I applied it, and I have seen that uh, work is in progress. Any idea about the state of work and how soon you can start using it? Yeah, actually, uh, a week, a week is not. A week is enough that they can finish it uh, so that uh, we can start using. Even as it is now, it's only rain this morning. It rained heavily this morning because the nature of our land is muddy. But apart from that, how it was, I mean, it was we said, we can still use it for whatever. So, we so how it. are the flood victims reacting to this? Well, uh, they are very happy that, uh, you see, even uh, uh, passing the vision on the, the river, crossing every moment, every now and then, you know, the kind of fear in us, and then more so, uh, the health aspect of it. So, they are happy that uh, at least. Some, uh, there is an effort going on uh, to get uh, our roots fixed 
uh, to create assets on that area. And then some of our people who live in Bato area, my Bato and then including me myself, it will be very helpful to us and then we can reach them as well. Assemblyman uh, for the area speaking on uh, where we've gotten with the construction of the road to the safe haven. Uh, he's been telling us that the people are satisfied with what is going on right now. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Defense has dismissed reports suggesting it has withdrawn its men from one of the worst affected areas, Mepe, in Noktong District. This follows reports that its officers stationed at Mepe in the Noktong District uh, to support victims of the Akosombo Dams village had been withdrawn from the area. Member of Parliament for Noktong, Samuel Okujetua Blakwa, who was earlier incensed about the report, said he was going to make sure the hidden faces behind the orders were exposed. Not long after that, he later shared a post saying the decision to move the officers from the ground had been withdrawn and the men were back in Mepe. But speaking on Joy News this morning on the Super Morning Show, Defence Minister Dominic Nitewu says contrary to the reports, the military has rather redeployed the personnel and equipment to other distressed communities which are in dire need of support. The Ghana Armed Forces are not working in isolation. The supervising body in this particular operation is the disaster management, not more. And when the incident happened, uh, you will know that there was a stimulation exercise at MIPE in, in uh, April this year to prepare for a possible spillage. And so both the armed forces, NADMO and VRU, anticipated that there would be a problem like this and had prepared for it, including doing a stimulation exercise, a live stimulation exercise at MIPE. So the people themselves knew that there was a possibility this could happen. So when it happened, the armed forces moved with NANMO and the VRA onto the ground. In fact, the first day the Honorable MP went to the place, it was both NANMO and the armed forces that actually carried him to, to the place to go and assess uh, the place. The armed forces have been working there all this while, using the 48th Engineering Regiment of the Armed Forces. When the president visited the place, I was there personally with him. I then told the Navy that from what I've seen, they should uh, deploy additional resources, uh, not just around Sogokope where they were working, and Bato and other areas where they were working, but also to Nepe as well. So. The Navy declared additional resources to the place. But over the last two days, both NANMO and the armed forces working on the ground operation decided that they should redeploy part of the military to other affected areas, particularly Bato and a few other areas, so that the, the other areas were occupied because the Navy had brought in 30 soldiers to be working there plus the 48th engineering regiment and so that was the decision they took i was a bit surprised for anybody to allude that there's an order from above no not at all uh, as minister i've not given any order my deputy is a member of parliament he has not given any order neither has anybody given any order for the military to withdraw from the area no not, not at all okay. the military is to serve the people of ghana and as long as the people of ghana have problems and the services of the military are needed, which I believe will always be needed. The military will be there to serve the people. Away from that, the opening of the lagoon floodgates and the sandbar at Azizaji has commenced to allow the free flow of the lagoon into the sea to mitigate the devastating floods in the Keta Angloga and Keta South municipalities, as well as the Three Tong district. Thus, according to the MCE for Keta, is to help avert any form of flooding of the major roads linking the municipalities. Ivy Setoji has more. The MCE, Emmanuel Gamega, noted that it was important to highlight that any intervention should be based on sound scientific knowledge and expertise, which, according to him, have been done. He said there have been extensive 
consultations with all the stakeholders we have we have used the radios even what even even the DVR. no you see we can't say months this decision uh, to do something about the problem started some some two to, to three weeks ago where all manner of stakeholders have to be consulted almost at the same time where the dufia even the dufia of keji himself was among the chiefs that we met with the our mafia of angola state he was part of them no i think this time is the right time uh, when anything is happening any disaster is happening you have to take time to do a thorough assessment uh, from a scientific point of view. He noted that according to research, the water level in the lagoon as of Wednesday, 18th October 2023 at 8.13, the water level the lagoon was 1.376 meters. So I think this time is the right time. Okay. And also for the fact that this is the time we have seen uh, this uh, threatening um, high levels of the lagoon. I say threatening because um, since I was born in this area, I'm not sure I've lived, I have lived to see this high level over 1.8 meters. I've not seen that before. So uh, with that, uh, we quickly have to put um, 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 in place measures, invite uh, uh, experts uh, who will help us to to, to uh, know the decisions to be taken. So I think we are not too late. Mr. Paul Sewa is the municipal engineer at the Keta Assembly. He has been speaking on the project. We want to flood the communities that have, that have been affected with the flooding. There's a flood control structure meant for that purpose. So today, you are going to cut the bridge into the sea and then open all the flood gates to name the water to flow into the sea. As, I, as it states now, some of the gates are open. So we close all of them first. Then after cutting, then we open it. And the water will flow with uh, force into the sea. They are going to do monitoring, we monitor it because the sea will be a problem to us. But you want to fill our trench, so the machine will be there opening it all the time. You will look at the tidal waves also. When it's high tide, it will stop. If it's a loose tide, then you open. So that's what we are going to do. So we are going to monitor it seriously. Ivy Satoji, Joy News, Keta. Meanwhile, in light of increasing calls for the government to consider temporarily relocating the affected residents to the Saglemi housing project site, Information Minister Kojo Ponkro Mata News Briefing emphasized the government's primary priority is providing essential assistance to the victims. Priority number one is to ensure that our brothers and sisters who have been displaced as a result of the spillage and the floods will get some relief. Priority number two will be to ensure that they get some assistance in getting back to their um, livelihoods and their um, communities. I think subsequent to that, if there are any further conversations, um, government will be more than uh, willing to uh, listen and engage on those conversations. But government is currently focused on the first two priorities, which is assisting our uh, colleagues who have been displaced, and then eventually when the water levels recede, assisting them to get back to their um, areas of livelihood. Like I've said, priority number one is to support people who are displaced currently. Priority number two is to get people back into their places when the water levels recede. And then subsequent to that, whatever else is outstanding can be examined. Country um, on the relief efforts um, and where some augmentation needs to take place, that will also um, take place. But then the ministerial committee is keenly monitoring uh, the relief efforts, not just downstream, but also even upstream where some floods have been occasioned as a result of the spillage, we understand, from the Bagri Dam, etc. Um, and so I think almost every three days you will get an update from the Interministerial Committee um, and where they need to augment the uh, relief or intervention efforts, they will do so. 
Ms. Okojopong Kerma also revealed that cabinet has approved additional economic measures to sustain Ghana's progress uh, towards towards consolidating the stability of growth and tightening spending. So the first thing was the cabinet took note of the progress of the implementation of the post-crisis program for economic growth. That's the PCPEG. Remember, this is a program we said we had developed and we needed IMF support for. And the cabinet is pleased with the implementation. The second thing is that um, cabinet has also approved some further economic measures aimed at further consolidating the stability that we are beginning to see and ensuring that we get a lot more growth, expansion and jobs in the Ghanaian economy moving um, forward. Uh, you recall that in terms of structural reforms, we have already done some things. There were some six quantitative performance criteria that we were uh, to achieve and they were successfully implemented. And then we were also supposed to ensure that we put in a strategy to strengthen the financial sector, clear arrears and prevent further arrears from building up, um, ensure that social interventions such as LEAP and school feeding, etc., were expanded, and we've been embarking all of, all of those ones. Now we are looking to some more structural reforms in the medium term, and these include um, enhancing the public financial management system to ensure that, among other things, all of these arrears that keep being accumulated off book and which come to hurt us from time to time can be dealt with. So we're trying to encourage every every single government entity to get on the Give Miss platform. We are also trying to, as a result of that, bring some more spending controls. That means that we are going to be tightly spending within the revenue limits of the country. If we don't have revenue for it, we are not going necessarily to be, um, for whatever expediency reasons, whether it's boring or whatever, working to uh, uh, try to uh, meet it. And we're also going to be working further towards bringing inflation down. The Bank of Ghana has mentioned that they're going to continue with a tight monetary policy to bring us down further from 38, um, you know, downwards to about the mid-20s by the end of this year, and then about um, 15 by the end of um, next year. So that's one of the things that is also being signed off. Let's take a break on Joy News today. We'll be back with more. Welcome back to Joy News today. And we're sticking with the latest uh, on the Norton Flats as government has actually begun constructing an alternative route to enable easy access to the safe havens uh, created for victims. The construction began a couple of days ago and it's already being used by some residents as the assemblyman confirms uh, earlier. Meanwhile, an 85-year-old victim of floods caused by the spillage of the Akunsom Badam Janet Gede is demanding the immediate reconstruction of her collapsed house. According to her, the conditions at the safe haven where she currently lives are not age-friendly as she struggles to ease herself. She laments the toilet facility at the camp is at a distance and squatting on it is a challenge due to her weak legs. With tears, Janet maintains the government must, as a matter of agency, come to the aid of the elderly across the safe heavens. Carlos Coloni has the rest of the story. I am suffering here. I'm asking for help. The plantain trees that used to give me between 200 and 150 seeds when I harvest have all been inundated. Yet I'm here going hungry. If there's help, they should help me. 
When the floods came, I couldn't save any of my personal belongings. My house collapsed. Ten chickens I rely on all died in the flood water. All the relief items being shared here, including soap, rice, cooking oil, we are not benefiting. Where to sleep at night is a challenge. At my age, I just put a cloth on the floor and sleep. There are no mattresses. If the sharing of relief items is this way, it's wrong. I can't sleep. I can't ease myself because I cannot walk to and squat on the toilet. My legs ache. If I leave here, where to stay is a problem. So I'd like to appeal to the government to help me because at my age I cannot do much. I have a lot of children and grandchildren. I drama, a vai flango, a vada, a canoca tao, obola mama, a ga, moru, a ye, a bli, a maca tap me at a cupomo, a jalla, a me, a bobo, the camelia bovamo. Obe, come here, coffee, you do dry like a pagalemian, me like you do run a cupomo. I be pagalamutina no, that a comilic primu ha ha, milic primu ha ha, prefer. That is why I was into the little poultry business to support myself. But that little business has been destroyed in the floods. So I want my house rebuilt so I can live happily with my children again. Fifi <laughs> Away from the flood stories, the attention of Joy News has been drawn to fake infomercials circulating on social media that bear its logo and cloning its anchors. These infomercials use deep fake technology to mimic the voices of some of our presenters and anchors and make various claims about the efficacy of certain medicines. Here are examples of some of these fake advertisements. Today on air, Dr. Johnson Haynes will talk about a drug from the USA that effectively fights hypertension like a common cold. There is a real epidemic of cardiovascular disease in Ghana, 57% among people over the age of 35. Thousands of people die every year due to inappropriate treatment. Large private pharmacies are restricting access to effective drugs for profit. We are compelled to immediately launch a national program Ghana Heart Wellbeing by procuring a batch of... You no longer need a blood pressure monitor. Your blood pressure will always be 120-80. It will only take 72 hours to achieve this. A renowned doctor will tell you how to clear cholesterol from your blood vessels and forget about high blood pressure forever. All those who suffer from high blood pressure, listen carefully. Do not bring yourself to a heart attack and stroke because of high blood pressure and thrombosis. I give you a 100% guarantee that in a News has been reporting each of such misrepresentations to Facebook for the necessary actions to be taken. Data analyst and IT consultant Maximus Ametsago believes the deep uh, problem deserves governmental interventions and solutions. The issue is that now this particular content is health related. Can you imagine this breaking news or something that we are just used to that you know aligns with the theme that you talk about? 
it will be very it will be believable and heading into the elections and all that yeah this is going to be like a common place and yeah, absolutely right. for me right. need to have you know the policy makers uh, you know and then the gatekeepers to have these platforms you know right. regulated so that is that is the whole idea and the fact is that we need to have online gatekeepers and it requires policy i know they are doing some ai policy and they are working on other you know related documentations but for ghana we need online gatekeeper like the cyber security unit that they currently have where some of these things can be reported well we wish to inform our valued audience that these informations are not from our platforms and should be disregarded. Ms. Ametogori again shares tips on how you can identify that such videos are fake. The issue is that some people may not pay attention to the facial expressions that uh, the, the video they are using or uh, the video they are viewing to see whether even the mouth, the mouth, the way Aisha mentions a word and the how uh, uh, the words are constructed in the in like in a, uh, the syntax of what they are saying. You can see that the AI is trying to, you know, imitate how you speak, but it wasn't properly done. So if you watch the of 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 the character in the video, you can tell that it doesn't. It, it was just miming along. It wasn't. It wasn't natural. So that's one and then they copied your design too as well to put your logo in the corner there now there are apps that are doing that where you can even simulate a whatsapp chat just yes, creating a sender and a, a receiver account and you can simulate all the chats i'm sure you've seen some of the, the screenshots that people have been posting so for us to do that first of all you know the joy news or the multimedia brand for for what they publish they don't publish health related content the way you are you, you you saw it in the video so that should be a red flag and say hey they don't you know sell this kind of product and of course there's no traceability or reference point or source to their platforms any of their platforms where you can watch that particular video is on third party platform and if you put a logo of a media house on top of, of of a video it means that the video should be available on their channels their online channels so if it's not there or somebody is using this as an endorsement for for their advertising you should report that video Chinese urges its audience to disregard such advertisements circulating on social media Let's do some politics now. Former NPP General Secretary, the late Kujo Usue Free, who was popularly known as Sir John, once made the statement, fear delegates, in reference to how delegates can smile in pretense towards an aspirant, take his gifts and assure him of their vote, only to vote against him in the end. Fear delegates has since become a famous statement, especially during internal party elections in Ghana. Ahead of the NPP presidential primaries coming up on November 4, Joy News will be talking to delegates across the country to find out what influences their choice of a candidate. We begin from the Bolga Upper East region, Bolga, where Albert Story has been speaking with some delegates. I am here at the Upper East Regional Office of the New Patriotic Party. My mission is to speak to delegates of the party to find out what they have in mind as the party prepares to go into the November 4 presidential primaries to select a new flag bearer to lead them into the 2024 elections. Having early on informed the regional secretary of the party of my mission, these five delegates volunteered to meet me here for a conversation. They are constituency and polling station executives of the NPP in the Upper East Region. I am the Bolga Central Constituency Youth Organizer and then I am a delegate. I'm an organizer. Police station organizer. So you are a delegate? I am. 
I'm the constituency organizer and member of the regional communication team. I'm also a delegate. The rural electoral area, woman organizer. Yes, I'm a delegate. I'm a police station secretary for the East Electoral Area. Yes, I'm a delegate, the police station secretary. But do they have other careers or occupations outside of politics? Uh, yes, I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer and I do little business. I say that I am a teacher by profession. Yeah, I am a teacher by profession. I do petty trading into Lucky Soap and so many professionals. I'm the proprietor of Great Minds Academy. It's a school and I'm also a farmer. I can tell you that I'm an inter entrepreneur. Yeah. I'm a trader and I'm working under youth employment at Forest Station. Yes. Outside of politics, I'm an accountant. Uh, I'm an accountant. I work with Grand Education Service. And to some education stories, pupils of Ciro DA Primary School and their parents are heaving a sigh of relief following the donation of scandal, sandals to the awards by Hosman Shoes Company Limited. Majority of the pupils hitherto walk long distances from their homes to the school barefooted. They do this even when the sun is hot and scorching, as well as rainy days. Following Joy News' series of features titled Ghana's Schools of Shame, by Jojo Kobna, the shoemaking company went to the aid of the children. Rafiq Salam reports from Syria. In the documentary, Jojo Kobna exposed the harrowing picture of the challenges that pupils at Siru DA Primary School in the Wobbles District go through to have access to basic education, including working to school barefooted. Headmistress of the school, Don Mahatibel, expressed joy over the donation and made painting a mental picture of the situation at the school. Actually today, parents have to make sure they get some <laughs> footwear they have kept down or they have to force themselves to get footwear like Charlie for them to wear and come to look presentable. But most of our people, they come to school walking barefoot. You can imagine when the sun is hot, the child is walking barefoot. It's rain, the whole place is muddy, the child is walking barefoot. But still, with all this, the child still moves from home, come to school every day to be taught. So getting these standards means that it will increase our enrollment, teaching and learning will be more effective, and people will enjoy coming to school the more. We're still live on Johnny today. We're coming to you from our studios in Kokomlimi. Let's take a break. When we return, there's a very latest coming from the world of business. Welcome to the business segment on Join You today with me, Emma Davis. The Bank of Ghana has indicated its preparedness to sustain the increase in dollar support for commercial banks this week. This is what Joy Business has picked up from persons close to the central bank and some bank treasurers. George Riafe has more. The Bank of Ghana was heavy on the market in terms of dollar support for the commercial banks. This, according to some of the bank treasurers that Joy Business has engaged, could be one of the main reasons for the sudden slowdown in the rate of depreciation against the dollar compared to some two weeks ago. Joy Business understands the central bank will increase the level of support for the commercial banks to deal with the sudden demand for dollars. The Bank of Ghana is also looking at carrying out its dollar auction for the bulk oil distribution firm this week, another measure that would help deal with the current pressure on the Ghana city. The Bank of Ghana believes this, together with other measures, should help slow the rate of depreciation by the Ghana city against the U.S. dollar. Officials of the Bank of Ghana have also told Joy Business that there is no need to panic as the outlook of the local currency remains favorable. This is due to the expected inflows from the World Bank, the IMF and the African Development Bank on the end of next month. Central Bank believes that it has also been able to build some gold reserves over the last month that would put it in a strong position to also defend the Ghana city in the coming months, especially the first quarter of next year. 
Smart Energy Solutions for Africa has begun deploying smokeless fuel energy innovation in some senior high schools in the Ashanti region. In partnership with the Akinten Apia Minka University, the project seeks to reduce the use of firewood to mitigate the increasing health risk of inhaling smoke from fuel wood. The long-term goal is, is to encourage the Ghana Education Service to adopt clean and climate-smart energy solutions for cooking in senior high schools. There is more in this report. Due to the adverse impact of wood smoke, the Smart Energy Solutions for Africa, CESA has launched a biofuel stove made from agro-waste in some selected schools. The ethanol fuel gel solution made from pineapple waste will be used in an enamel-coated aluminium stove for cooking. CESA project coordinator Magdalena Shikroska revealed the EU-sponsored project is implemented in nine African countries. And by our partners in Amistad, actually, uh, waste to energy has been identified as one of the technologies that we should focus on. In our ent entrepreneur call that we launched last year, uh, we came to the conclusion that actually looking for um, clean cooking would be clean cooking would be one of the um, technologies of focus because we saw that there is a need in Ghana and that was communicated to us by Amstead. So then in the call for entrepreneurs, we are looking actually for the innovative uh, companies who could show uh, interesting uh, solutions. In contributing to combating climate change and protecting the environment, the Akenten Apia Menka University partnered with CESA to implement its carbon footprint reduction invention. The university hopes the Ghana Education Service will switch to using the clean stove for cooking for students. Professor Isaac Boaton speaks for the university. It's green, it's very affordable, and it's, it reduces the carbon footprint, the carbon emission, and it helps government of Ghana to achieve a target of 10% uh, contribution for green sources by 2030 in terms of our energy mix. So that is what these projects stand for. A solar microgrid was also handed over to two communities in the Ashanti region as part of the project. For Joy News, Anita Sewa Ajogan reporting. That's all for business. My name is Emma Davis. For more business news, do log on to myjoyonline.com. Up next is sports. Time now for sports on Joy News today with me, Muftao Nabila Abdullah. Accra House of Folk has gone about five games without scoring a single goal after six matches in the Ghana Premier League. The Phobians over the weekend drew 0 0 against Samatex, and head coach of the team, uh, Martin Kupman, says that the failure of footballers to score goals is a larger issue in Ghana football, and House of Folk is just a part of it. According to him, even the senior national team, the Black Stars, lacks strikers and wingers who are able to convert chances to goals. Yeah, I think uh, we uh, deserved an, uh, an, uh, three points uh, over win winning, but now you see, uh, we come a lot of times now in the box, so we did a lot of training about this. Nice sessions, the boys fight for their life, and uh, I think we have two times 45 minutes control about the game. Only finishing on this moment is, is the question now. But uh, if we continue to do this, it will be uh, happen uh, for sure. When I checked on my statistics board, you had over 60% of the possession. How do you intend to translate this dominance in possession into goals so that you can be winning games? Yeah, to give them confidence and uh, take L every time what we did the 14 days now before this match. Every time to come in the box and uh, from, from up behind to build up in the midfield on the wingers and the strikers. We did a very good job, but we wait for the goal and uh, that's what we need. Uh. Hamza started today and he really impressed. He had a very good game. Your impressions about his performance? Yeah, sure. I, I'm very happy for him. If I see him jumping and I see some things from Romario, eh, the Brazilian player, so I'm very happy. Look, there is a, a deep problem in Ghana football, I will tell you. In short time. What is the problem? The problem is also in the national team, wingers and strikers. I, I keep it saying, and it's not only with us, also in the national team, also in the other clubs. And then you say, yeah, other clubs score. The reality say 
we have five points. This team belongs to the fans. Yeah. They get disappointed when they don't get the results. What are you telling them after this draw? Yeah, uh, what can I tell? Uh, we, we will do everything to, to win games. Eh? And uh, actually, they must come and look uh, how we work with the boys. And I think I am not the problem. And uh, also not the players. They give everything. But we need experience and we need actually uh, yeah, a goal. And then we step over the problem. And the Africa Football League began over the weekend and it has generated lots of conversations on social media and traditional media. With many claiming that it is a competition that will be replaced in the CAF Champions League. However, Communications Director of the Confederation of African Football, Luxolo September, says that this is a competition that is expected to generate excitement and not replace the CAF Champions League. But competing factors, these are collaborating factors. If you think about it, the, 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 the African Football League is a sister competition to the CAF Champions League. And one doesn't replace the other. It is not cannibalism. It is a complementary relationship that you will look at the African Football League that generates a certain excitement. In the next week, we are looking forward to watching the Champions League, the same teams that we are playing. Actually, what you think about, if you think about the number of games the European teams are playing, each team plays about 54 to 60 matches. In Africa, our teams play about 30, 34 matches a season. That's almost half of that, right? If you look at an average point of view. Now, the reason, if you look at the 60 matches and the revenue that is generated from the 60 matches, Africa needs to catch up. Not only on the matches, because the matches is linked to content, and content is linked to revenue. Now, I almost always have a problem with people who are criticizing the solutions coming from Africa without giving viable solutions to the material conditions we face. Africa doesn't need aid. It has received aid for the last 50 years. <clears throat> African football needs innovative solutions so that it can be self-sustaining itself so that we don't hear this whole thing of our players, best players playing in Europe and other places. Of course, we are in a global community whereby we are always going to exchange things. But it must be because I want to go and play in Denmark. I want to go and play in France. We have to develop our own thing. The African Football League is an idea towards creating sustainability, creating relevance. And the African Football League, uh, commenced, uh, it commenced on October 20 and will end on November uh, 21. And that is a competition, three weeks of major football action with the likes of Al Ali TP Mazembe, with the Casablanca, uh, Petro Luanda, uh, and Ayimba of Nigeria, all competing for the ultimate prize of about $14.4 million in place. Who walks away with that? Catch the competition live on the Joy Prime channel. That's your sports for now. We do have more sports stories on myjoyonline.com. The episode two of the most exhilarating game show on Joy Prime, Step Up with Syntex Sun Glass Sunday, saw four young men representing Blue Crest College, Ghana Institute of Journalism, and Cape Coast University take turns on stage to win cash and amazing prizes from sponsors, uh, Lois Adeyemi, more. Where are my players? Come up, come up, all of you. Come introduce yourselves to me. This episode saw four contestants from Blue Crest College, Ghana Institute of Journalism, GIJ, and Cape Coast University, UCC, mount the stage to answer questions and secure cash and prizes from sponsors. The host, George Kwe, laid down the rules of the game and gave each contestant the chance to partake in the fastest finger challenge to earn them the chance to step up. That was B, that was the correct answer. F -O.
And that's it for showbiz. We apologize for the sound, though. That will be it also for the bulletin this afternoon. My name is Aisha Prime. Log on to myjohnline.com for more of the news and updates of all the developing stories. But before I leave you also, happy birthday to production assistant, <laughs> Miss Loretta. Happy birthday. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of our programs.